Shalom. <laughs> so I have a very, um, I feel important thing to say today. So I was led onto my social media accounts, my Instagram account to be more specific today. Um, I don't use any of my um, social media accounts other than YouTube anymore. But the reason why I haven't discarded them is because towards the end of me using them, I was posting a lot of content, revelations and so forth about Yahusha, Yahuwah. And I just pray that, you know, by me leaving them up, somebody that didn't already see them will stumble across them and praise Yah if they enter into a relationship with him via Yahusha Hamashiach. So it just so happened that today that I actually had a reason I had gone to my Instagram account um, but I did go check in on a few people. Um, I'm really bad about calling people. <laughs> I really am. That's just one of the things I got to work on. I'll, if you pop into my mind, more than likely I'll probably pray for you, but I'm probably not going to call you. And I've been working on it, but I'm still, that's just me. I'm not a phone person. Um, <laughs> and it's mainly because I'm not a small talk person. Like, I mean, not small talk, superficial. Yeah, small talk. Small talk? Is that what I'm looking for? Yeah. Okay, so I'm not the type of person that just likes to talk about, like, surface things, like, small, superficial things. Anyway, I know I know you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, I'm not that type of person. Like, if it's not a meaningful conversation, I'm not going to get on the phone. And most of the time, when it comes to the majority of the people in our lives, we're not having these deep philosophical conversations with them. Let's just... I mean, and if you are, then you are a very blessed person. But anyway, <laughs> said all that to say, you know, I saw a lot of the people that I used to hang out with, kick it with, whatnot. Like, they got all this stuff going on. And it's not bad stuff, you know. But one of the things that I love about the relationship that Yahuwah offers us through his son is the ability to see the truth and not the delusion that's presented before our natural eyes day in and day out. And... I hear a lot of people saying stuff like, you know, it's my time now. Or, you know, they're going here and they're doing these things and they're building this. And every time they do something that they find significant, they got posts about it. And that is a form of, well, that, that is a need for validation. You need to be validated. You need people to like you and support you and applaud you because of the stuff that you're doing with your life and please understand I'm not diminishing these people because some of them are really doing some really great things um, with their lives but again I'm speaking from a spiritual from the spiritual side of things and not you know from the surface level physical what we're seeing with our natural eyes type of thing so when you hear someone say stuff like you know it's my time now that is a person speaking from a trauma. That is their, literally their trauma speaking to you. It's my time now. They're saying that I've been hurt so many times that I am tired of thinking about other people. It's, it's time for me to think about me, myself, and I. That is a trauma response. If someone is constantly posting every single aspect of their life that they have going on, that is someone who does not feel validated. That is someone who need, that does not feel loved. And... They love the attention <clears throat> that they're getting from their social media followers. And let's face it, most people know and understand that, you know, the moment you become irrelevant on social media, that's it. You lose it all. But they still want to ride in that limelight until it all fades away. And in this day and age, social media and especially YouTube <laughs> is the new celebrity. Being a social media influencer or YouTuber is the new celebrity. Nobody even really cares about who we have deemed to be actual celebrities like movie stars and whatnot. Nobody really even cares about that anymore. It's mainly about the YouTubers and the social media influencers. That Those are the new celebrities. So what am I saying? It's time we start having this conversation. It's time that we start stop normalizing trauma and we stop applauding it. Because when you start to see the 
symptoms of someone who has trauma in their lives. You know, they key the key one that I want to say is when you start hearing them saying it's my time now. That's the key, the key one. You know, they just overcame something difficult in their life, no matter what it is, not diminishing what they overcame. But here's the thing. You didn't really overcome it if you're responding, trauma response is what I was looking for. You're not, you didn't really overcome it if your response is, I'm going to go into myself and I'm not going to leave out of here and I'm just going to do me. I'm going to let you see me do me, but this, I'm just, I'm, I'm closing up into myself. Yes, we should have boundaries that we place in our lives. But when we get to that point where we start saying things like it's my time now and, you know, I'm going to shot like trauma responses is not the, the it's not a glow up. It shouldn't be a goal to attain. But in the world's eyes, it is. And you see a lot of people being influenced by people that have trauma bonds and well trauma responses that are trauma responding <laughs> I don't have the correct terminology for it but you see people being influenced because I mean again youtubers social social media influencers they are influencers altogether they're just on different aspects of it but they are in people's lives influencing them to do certain things and what's really influencing that person to listen to them is the fact that this person might go to a different country every week or might have moved into a nice apartment and bought all this furniture and they just appear to be living the life. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of these people taking their lives. There are a lot of these people that when the camera goes off, they probably cry. You know, I've heard of people having it all, taking their life or people having it all and, and crying in their private time when nobody is looking that is not somebody who's overcome not to say that you know when you overcome you don't have your moments but what I'm saying is someone that has overcome is not worried about who's looking for them or at them you're not worried about that and when you have these type of responses to your trauma where it's just like I think about my seven-year-old you know, he's a very awesome kid. I love him. I wouldn't trade him for the world, but he's still a kid. And I spend a lot of time with him as a single mom. You know, I have to divide myself even more than I normally would if I were married. And that's just the reality of my situation. So I have to, div I have to make myself even more available to him because he has me mostly in his life at most of the time. So even with all the attention that I give him, as soon as I get a phone call or somebody shows me any type of attention, he's like, hey mom, look at me. Hey, hey, look at what I'm doing. Look over here, look over there. That's what I think of when I see these, when I, that's what I think of when I think of social media. It's like a, hey, look at me, look at what I'm doing over here. It's a need for attention. And if you notice, there are some people that they don't get on social media like that. They don't. And I'm not saying that these people are better than anybody. And I'm not saying the people that do get on social media and post out of time are worse than anybody. So hear what I am saying and don't insert something else into what I'm saying and then argue with that because that's called a straw man argument. Arguing with something I didn't say. I'm okay with folks not agreeing with me because here's the thing. I can have a conversation with a grown person, but just don't put words in my mouth and then start arguing about it. That's all I'm asking. What I'm saying is, let's really start listening to what people are saying and watching what they are doing because we're supposed to be spiritually minded and part of that is being able to see into the Ruach and hear in the Ruach and speak in the Ruach and move in the Ruach. So it's time to transition out of the physical and stop taking things at what it, at face value and really see and hear what's going on before our very eyes because we cannot be, we can't be of any use to anyone in this physical kingdom if we're still caught up in the physical kingdom. People are out here, their Ruachs are literally out here 
the, the different demons and stuff that they're dealing with are really out, or unclean rocks, I should say, are out here telling us, hey, I'm over here, and we're so caught up in the physical realm that we can't hear it, and we can't see it. And so we begin to respond in a physical way. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahuwah to the pulling down of strongholds. So now we have to start practicing or yeah, we have to start practicing using the armor of Yahuwah. I probably said that all types of wrong, but I know y'all feel what I'm trying to say. We have to get to the point where we just, we start to really like, let's pray for people. Let's start speaking life over them in the Ruach. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't have to be present when you speak life over them. When you see that thing, speak life over them. If you're on Instagram, Twitter, whatnot, and you see Ruach HaKadosh starts revealing these things to you, start speaking that over them. Start speaking Yahuwah's word over them because that's your sword. Battle, battle their demons. Because if you start going to war for those people, they might be able to at some point in time just have a little moment where they can hear Yahuwah's voice and that might be the, the that might be just enough time for them to turn around and turn towards him that might be just enough time for them to turn away from the world and turn towards Yahuwah none of us know none of us know but we're never going to know unless we get out here and we do it right so <clears throat> The last thing I'm going to say that I'm going to get off of here. And this is to my to my um, ladies out here. And I'm just, this is to my Akotis, my sisters. And if you're not a child of Yahuwah, you're not my sister. So I'm not speaking to you. I don't mean that in a derogatory term. I just mean that you don't have Ruach HaKodesh to lead you into doing what I'm about to say. So I, I'm not expecting this of you. To my sisters... All the men in your life, every single one of the men in your life, before I go into what I'm what I was about to say, I'm gonna say this. As women, the world caters to our emotions, our needs, whatever, so on and so forth. Like it's it's normal for a woman to have emotions, needs, so on and so forth, and nobody says anything about it for the most part when we express that, right? So what I'm going to ask of you ladies is every single man in your life whether it be your husband your brothers your father your, your sons your cousins your uncles your co-workers the mailman the the postman whoever well that's the same thing but you get what i'm trying to say the guy at the auto parts store the next man that you that rock Kodesh leads you to be in front of and reminds you to do this I want you to ask him, how are you doing today? And if he is vulnerable enough with you to actually answer that question and not just say, oh, well, thank you. How are you doing? Because we've been trained to just whip out that quick response when that's not really the truth most of the time. If he actually is vulnerable enough to tell you how he's feeling, listen. And I mean, really listen. Do not listen to respond. Listen to understand and as you're listening to understand I want you to do this for me do not find something that happened to you in your life and start talking about it because you feel like it's relevant to the conversation do not find a way to make that conversation about you you ask that man how he was doing let him tell you these men out here feel like they are not human beings. They feel less than human beings. They feel like objects. And that's even men in the truth sometimes. I mean, if he's truly healed, he doesn't feel that way. But still, that doesn't mean you shouldn't ask him how he's doing, how he's feeling, so on and so forth. It's time that we really start stepping outside of ourselves and seeing and hearing other people we have to do this because yes we have all been in situations we all have that overcoming story some of us have more than one some of us are in the process of developing that story but at the end of the day true overcoming 
is not having to go, hey, look what I'm doing. Because realistically, I can go ahead and tell y'all this. I have a lot of things that I could get on here and be like, yo, I got this going on. Yo, I got this going on. Yo, I got this going on. But you know why I don't? I cannot honestly tell you why out of everybody else that I've known in my life that didn't get pulled out of their mess, that was allowed to die, I wasn't one of them. Yahuwah, for whatever reason, looked and saw me and was like, yeah, that one. Yeah, don't let her die. She can go through some stuff, but yeah, we ain't gonna let her die. Yeah, I wanna use her. Bruh, this ain't about me. So I don't get on here telling y'all about all the glorious and glamorous things I got going on because it ain't about me. That's why you always see me in my car, in my house. Very seldomly you might see me at work or something, but most of the time you will not see me out and about making videos and if you do in the future understand it was all Ruach, it was all led by Ruach Kodesh because I could post the pictures of what I have going on in my life but this is not it's not about me it's not about hey look at me what I got going on and I know some people will argue and say well it's just people trying to show what you who it can do in and through you no it's not no it's not no it's not we're not going to we're not going to keep making excuses anymore again like i said or maybe i didn't say i don't know i may have said it or may not have said it but i'm just i've never been that bandwagon jumper that just jumps on like even when i was in the world i was that person that when i saw the crowd going in one direction i, I went the other direction that was always me i've never been afraid to be that person that stood up by themselves and says hey we need to talk about this. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. We need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. It's an issue. It's a, it's a huge issue. And the thing about it is, like I said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We out here <clears throat> having these panel discussions. We're out here do, having these movements. We're out here doing all these things in the physical but we're not doing the one thing that Yahuwah told us to do, and that's to utilize the weapons of our warfare, his his armor. The helmet of salvation. Do you know that the armor in Ephesians 6 is priestly garments? I can't remember. It's Leviticus, it's in the book of Leviticus. I want to say it's like Leviticus 7, Leviticus 8, something like that. I'll put it in the description. But it literally describes the garments of Aaron and his sons and it's literally the same garments that's described in Ephesians chapter 6 those are priestly garments we are supposed to be priests and kings it's a kingly priesthood that is how we get out here and fight that's why we don't have to make a whole lot of noise and say, hey, look what I'm doing. Look at this fundraiser that I started. Look at this ministry that I started. We don't have to do all that. And no, I'm not saying again that it's wrong to start a ministry. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like we don't advertise because we don't have to because the fighting that we're supposed to be doing is supposed to be in the spiritual realm because we can't physically see in the spiritual realm. Nobody should be seeing what we're doing. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. It might be the opposite, but y'all get what I'm saying. You don't have to be out here doing this in public. Because what you talk to your father about in private or what you do in private, your father will reward you openly for. And that reward is him answering that prayer. I guarantee you, if you go to war spiritually on behalf of another person praying for them, I'm talking about you really go in praying for them. That is that is what loving someone as you love yourself truly looks like. Going to war, praying for someone earnestly for their soul, their salvation. When you do that for someone, you can't tell me Yahuwah ain't going to honor that. Unless he tells you not to pray for someone. And believe me, he does tell, tell you sometimes to, to stop praying for people. Matter of fact, go read Jeremiah chapter 11. And when you get to verse 14, hit me back up. And you'll notice that in that chapter, 
Jeremiah, Yermiyahu, he was talking about Yasharal. He wasn't talking about folks out in the world. Yahuwah does tell you to stop praying for people at, after a certain amount of time. But until he does, you start praying for someone, warn for somebody in the Ruach, he will reward you openly for that. I can guarantee you. You will start to see things change in that person's life. You don't have to make a big fun, uh, funk or stink about it. Matter of fact, you don't even have to tell them you were praying for them. I hate when somebody's like, yo, I was praying for you. So, and you want a cookie? Like, we're supposed to be doing this. We're not, that's like a child taking the trash out or making their bed and then expecting allowance money for it. You're supposed to do that. That's part of our function as Yasharal is to pray for people to lead them to our king because he is the high priest so and I know I apologize you guys I get real passionate when I talk about stuff like this so it's probably coming off like I'm being condescending and whatnot and I have been told that I sound condescending a lot of times but realistically like this is just this is the reality of the situation like we we got to talk about the elephant in the room and I can't continue to watch it happen and just not say anything about it. So it is what it is. <laughs> At the end of the day, this is our function as Yashara. We have to start operating in this function. The earth, all of creation has been waiting for the sons of Yahuwah to manifest, right? Bruh, let's get to manifesting. And I don't mean manifesting like the world's talking about. So let's go ahead and talk about that too. I'm talking about let's go ahead and, and get to work. That's what I mean. Get to work in Yahuwah's kingdom using Yahuwah's weapons and Yahuwah's ways and Yahuwah's methods. We ain't out here using the devil's ways and the devil's methods and so on and so forth. No, I ain't talking about that type of manifesting. So let's go ahead and get that out your mind right now. Okay? Because that's witchcraft. All these folks out here talking about something, I manifested this and let's get to manifesting how, how to manifest a good life. That's witchcraft. All that's witchcraft. We ain't talking about witchcraft, baby. We talking about warring in the Ruach. Using the weapons of our warfare that was provided to us by Yahushua Hamashiach when he openly allowed himself to be murdered on our behalf and then resurrected. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. All right. But as always, <laughs> I love you all. It's Shalom Alakim.